Chapter twenty two of the Young Woman's Guide to Excellence by William A. Alcott. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Bria Snow. Chapter twenty two Industry. What ordinary virtue is there more commendable in the young than industry? On this account, and in this view, it is that well disposed parents sometimes employ their children in a way not absolutely or in itself useful to them for the sake of their general habit such parents are certainly excusable even if their example should not be regarded as commendable or as worthy of being followed dr good the well-known theological philosophical and medical writer vows the belief that man is naturally lazy that he would not so much as lift a finger if he could help it and that all his activity grows out of a desire to avoid present or future suffering or pain perhaps this is carrying the matter rather too far since we see young women positively active not so much from the desire of avoiding pain as that of procuring pleasure but however untrue it may be in regard to children it is unquestionably true of many adults and some it is to be feared of both sexes of all lazy persons however i dislike most to see a lazy young woman destined by her creator at once to charm instruct and improve the world around her by her looks her words and her actions and this to a degree which no female has ever yet attained how exceedingly painful is it to see her floating along the stream of inaction or insignificance without making one considerable effort to arouse her faculties bodily mental and moral from their half dormant condition too many females who are trained in the bosom of ease and abundance have no idea of any attempts at benevolent effort or even of active untiring industry if they are not more selfish than the other sex they are scarcely less so they live but for themselves and seem to desire no more granting as we sometimes do that this is the fault of their education is it therefore the less pitiable i have already urged the importance of self-dependence every healthy young woman ought to be so trained as to be able to make her own way through the world without becoming at all its debtor i speak now not merely of her moral and intellectual and domestic efforts but also of her physical ones i care not what her rank or condition may be every american young woman ought to be able in the common language of the community to support herself through life i must insist on even more than this she ought to be able in point of bodily efficiency to do something for the support of others and not merely something but a great deal I am not ignorant of the low rate of female wages, disproportioned altogether so to their comparative value in the scale of human happiness, and yet, with all necessary abatements, I hold that all healthy females ought to be able to support themselves, should necessity require it, and to aid in supporting others. Whether, however, their labour supports themselves, or more than does it, is not so much the question as whether they are truly industrious an aged woman who at ninety was often found at her spinning wheel and always at active employment though by no means indignant was accustomed to say that every person ought to strain every nerve to get property as long as life lasts as a matter of duty i would not say quite so much as this but i do say that every person no matter what may be her rank or circumstances ought to be industrious from early life to the last moment such a person male or female will seldom want means of support and even of distributing to him that needeth but should such a thing happen it is of no very great importance she will at least die with the consciousness of having spent her life in active industry and of having benefited someone though she may have spent less on herself as to the kind of labour or exercise in which females ought to engage i have perhaps 
said enough already i will only add that i consider a person as industrious and as truly worthy of time i mean pecuniary reward in performing valuable mental or moral labour a part of her time as she who was engaged the whole time with her hands and i know of no propriety in the custom which has led to the valuation of things by a different standard i know of no reason for example why a young woman who as a sister or as a daughter or as a friend merely contributes by wise management to keep an aged parent or an infant child or any other person happy though it were only by cheerful conversation or by relating stories for an hour or so occasionally i know not i say why she is not as truly entitled to the rewards of industry as though she were employed in furnishing bread or clothing to the same persons are the affections and passions and knowledge and excellence of less value than the rewards of manual labour in money or property and is not mental or spiritual labour at least as valuable as bodily End of chapter 22